Good afternoon. My name is Glenn Berger, and I am the chair of the Board of Trustees of the Vermont Law School. It is my pleasure to welcome you all, graduates, parents, spouses, partners, children, friends, trustees, faculty, staff, and alumni to Vermont Law School's 46th commencement to celebrate not only the class of 2021, but also the class of 2020, whose commencement was canceled last year due to the pandemic. As you can already see, this graduation, like most everything else that has transpired this past year, is unique. In case you haven't noticed, this commencement ceremony has been pre-recorded in order to give you, under these difficult circumstances, as close to the, as to the experience of a traditional VLS graduation as we can. As much as this graduation and your law school experience over the past year were extraordinarily different from any other VLS class who graduated before you, your graduation is no less a great accomplishment. In fact, some might say it is a greater accomplishment considering all that you've had to deal with to be here today. But being different or having to deal with difficult circumstances is not a bad thing. I too am a graduate of the Vermont Law School, class of 1978, the third graduating class. Way back then, VLS was not what it is today. There was no Cornell Law Library, no Chase Center, no legal clinic, no food service, no fitness center, and on occasion, not even enough desks to go around. But like today, VLS had already adopted the values of community, entrepreneurship, and individu individualism. And being located in South Royalton made it a very special place for me and my classmates. We were pioneers then, in much the same way as you have been pioneers over the past 18 months. And I know it enhanced my VLS experience as I hope it has yours. Since graduation, I have always been proud to say I attended VLS because it gave me a great education and an alternative experience for most other law schools. You should also be proud of the fact that after all the hard work that you have done and your ability to navigate the circumstances that one could never have predicted or imagined, a good loyalty trait, by the way, you are now graduating from Vermont Law School. And the class of 2020 can brag it is the only class ever to graduate twice. As a trustee for many years, I have attended numerous VLS graduations, and I've always been struck by how happy and excited everyone is. Parents, grandparents, spouses, friends, children, faculty, staff, trustees, and of course, you, the graduates. And even though this graduation is out of the ordinary, it is equally happy and exciting. With all that in mind, may I be the first to offer you and your families on behalf of myself and the 24 hardworking members of the Board of Trustees, our heartfelt congratulations on graduating from the Vermont Law School. You did it, and I wish you good luck and all the best in your future endeavors. Finally, I would like to have all of us share a moment of silence to remember those members of our community who have passed this year and whose presence is sorely missed. It is now my pleasure to introduce Interim President and Dean Beth McCormick. Thank you, Chairman Berger. Trustees, honored guests, faculty, alumni, staff, members of the graduating classes of 2021 and 2020, and to all watching today who loved and supported our graduates. Welcome to Vermont Law School's 46th commencement ceremony. I'd like to start off by acknowledging the obvious. We are not physically together today, although I wish with all of my heart that we were. But for me, and I hope for all of you graduating today, that fact that we are gathering online instead of in our beautiful South Royalton does nothing to diminish the magnitude of your accomplishments. Quite the opposite, actually. I think it is more than fair to say that each of you individually and collectively had to endure 
some of the most harrowing circumstances any graduate students have faced in recent years. Law in graduate school is, as you know, very hard. If it were easy, everyone would do it. The curriculum by design pushes you to learn theories and practical concepts beyond anything you've previously experienced. Your clinical work thrusts you into real world experiences and people's real life challenges. And many of you juggled a multitude of other responsibilities while you were in school. Family obligations, work obligations, community service. None of that just simply disappears when your appellate advocacy brief is due at 9, 9 a.m. 9.01 is late. Layering on top of that, a global pandemic added a nearly insurmountable degree of difficulty. And yet, you did it. And I must tell you that I have learned as much about you in the past 15 months as I have during our time together on campus. You are a hardworking lot, focused on your goals and the future, even in the face of unimaginable circumstances. You are flexible, resilient, and resourceful. You found a way to learn with chaos and fear around you. You mastered technology to complete your degrees while parenting and homeschooling your children. You have written your AWRs while caring for sick parents and relatives. You have helped the administration lead the school during this time with your ideas and initiatives. Throughout it all, you have been patient and kind, taking care of each other and checking in on each other and on us. I can't tell you how many emails my colleagues and I received from you asking us how we were doing in the face of your own upheaval. You, more than any other class that have come before you, and likely any classes that will come after, epitomize our motto that swans fly together, even when we're apart. You came to us from a variety of experiences as farm owners, ranch hands, beekeepers, horse trainers, and bird watchers, political campaign workers, educators, social workers, lifeguards, bartenders, baristas, and river guides. You leave us to be law clerks in New Jersey and Connecticut, Colorado, Montana, Vermont, Texas, and Alaska. You leave us to work at the EPA and in immigration, and as defenders and prosecutors throughout the country. You leave us to work for nonprofits and government agencies. You leave us to be policymakers for the environment and for justice reform. You leave us with the tools to be advocates to improve your communities, the world, and the natural environment. You also leave us with a greater appreciation for health, your families, and your education. You leave us with a newfound gratitude for the freedom to move as you wish and the special privilege of being outside in our mountains and near our beautiful White River. You leave us with a deeper appreciation of the power of human touch and camaraderie. You leave us with a profound understanding of the responsibility each of us has to care for our and protect our neighbors, especially the most vulnerable among us. You, already, you leave us already schooled in meeting the challenge that brings even the most wise among us to our knees, the challenge of moving forward in uncertainty. You are proof that there is always a way. In the years to come, I know Dean Jefferson and I and Dean Brennan will tell the story of the classes of 2020 and 2021 to discouraged and struggling students, to inspire them and motivate them to keep moving forward. Your toughness is your forever legacy here. If there ever comes a time in your professional or personal lives that you doubt you can accomplish something, I hope you will remember what you have accomplished at Vermont Law School. You can do the seemingly impossible because you already have. I know you are all excited to get to the actual bestowing of degrees, but before we do that, I'd like to describe the types of degrees we will be awarding today. We will be awarding a Juris Doctor or JD degree, which will allow those holders to take the bar exam and be licensed to practice in a particular state. We will also award the LLM degrees to those who have already received a law degree and want to specialize, particularly in environmental law, or to take the bar here in the United States. In addition to being a law school, Vermont Law School is also a policy school, and we offer four master's degrees. The Master of Environmental Law and Policy, the Master of Energy, Regulation and Law, the Master of Food and Agriculture Law, 
and the Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. We will also today bestow a professional certificate in restorative justice. And it is our privilege to be joined today by three very distinguished guests who will receive honorary degrees. Jacqueline Patterson, Senior Director of the NAACP Environmental and Climate Justice Program, who will deliver the 46th commencement address shortly. Yesterday evening's 2021 commencement environmental speaker, Rick Middleton, founder and president emeritus of the Southern Environment Law Center. And Tom Sullivan, the University of Vermont's president from 2012 to 2019. I speak on behalf of all faculty members when I say that we are proud of today's graduates, but there is one faculty member in particular who I know is especially proud and to whom I owe a special debt of gratitude. President and Dean Emeritus Tom McHenry, who served as president and dean the majority of the class of 20 and 2021's time here. I know he is watching today with pride and appreciation for everything you have done and will do for the VLS community. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dean McHenry for the blood, sweat, and tears that he poured into VLS during his tenure. Thank you, Tom. Before I turn things over to our keynote speaker, I would like to leave tonight's graduates with one parting thought. In just a few short minutes, you will be officially a member of a very important and impactful club, Vermont Law School alumni. With membership comes great privilege and responsibility to use the power of the law to pursue your passions while doing good in the world. I wish you the best in your endeavors. The world needs committed, intelligent professionals like you now more than ever. Thank you and congratulations to the resilient, resourceful and remarkable classes of 2020 and 2021 and to all those who supported them on their journeys. Vermont Law School will never forget you. And now I'd like to th turn things back to Chair Berger. Thank you, Dean McCormick. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker this year, Jacqueline Patterson. Jacqueline Patterson is the Senior Director of the NAACP Environmental and Climate Justice Program. Since 2007, she has served as coordinator and co-founder of Women of Color United, <clears throat> a committed activist and advocate for women's rights and environmental and climate justice. She has held prominent positions at Action Aid, IMA World Health, Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, Johns Hopkins University, and was a Peace Corps volunteer in Jamaica. Holding master's degrees from both the University of Maryland and Johns Hopkins University, Jackie Patterson currently serves on numerous boards, including Greenpeace, the Bill Anderson Fund, the American Society of Adaptation Professionals, and the National Black Workers Center Project. She has authored numerous articles and publications, including Equity in Resilience Building for Climate Adaptation, an, indicator, an Indicators Document, Climate Change is a Civil Rights Issue, and Our Communities, Our Power. We are delighted that she has agreed to join us in celebrating the classes of 2021 and 2020. Jackie Patterson, it is with great pleasure to introduce you and to welcome you virtually to Vermont Law School. Thank you so much for the honor of having me speak with you all today. And it's such a glorious day to find this awesome group of emerging leaders being unleashed on the world with your talents and passions and spirit. And this is a moment when your leadership is critically needed. Um, recently, I was on a panel with Stephen Benjamin, mayor of Columbia, South Carolina. He said that the COVID-19 pandemic served as an X-ray exposing the broken bones of American society. Several African-American environmental justice movement leaders, including Shakobi Wilson, Bernice Miller-Travis, Adrian Hollis, have referred to these times as the era of the syndemic, a combination of concurrent epidemics, including COVID-19, the economic crisis, the climate crisis, and the racial awakening. These epidemics share patterns of disproportionate impact on population groups that are marginalized by society, and the proliferation of each epidemic as the same root cause of an extractive economy designed for the enclosure of wealth and power. 
At the same time, there's hope in the expanding swath of society beginning to accept Mayor Benjamin's diagnosis. People are seeing that the solution is in shifting away from a society rooted in exploitation and domination to one anchored by caring and cooperation and a true notion of all for one and one for all. An increasing swath of society is embracing the need for systems change. More people see themselves as responsible for being the change we want to see in the world. You see the Atlantic Coast Pipeline and the Keystone Pipelines blocked and the coal burning Navajo generating station decommissioned while the solar powered Navajo energy storage station comes online. We're inspired by the Soul Fire Farm, the Earth Sea Collective, the Baltimore Community Land Trust, and so much more. We find hope as we see white nationalists becoming Black Lives Matter activists. We're seeing the restructuring of police departments. Thousands of people are engaging in mutual aid as well as random acts of kindness and connection. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, we have before us the glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization. This is the moment in which we find ourselves, whether we're at the beginning of our careers and a turning point in our careers or mid-career, or we don't have a career. <laughs> this is the time that calls us all to be our best selves, to identify our perch of leadership. This is our deeply introspective moment to ask ourselves, who is my best self? What is my optimal path? With whom am I traveling? And what is the directional force in my compass? As I contemplate who is my best self, I know that I am deeply committed to systems change. I also know that I am an extreme introvert. <laughs> I've struggled with finding my best place in the movement and in some ways in life. At conferences, I can always be found in the back of the room skulking behind a potted plant, typing on my laptop. I know that if I spend too long having to actively engage with people, I quickly start to shut down. And when people try to draw me out, I become uncomfortable and irritable. And as a result, I've been known to lash out like a cornered cat. I've learned these lessons about myself the hard way, both for myself and for everyone concerned. It's definitely a testament to why self-care isn't just about caring for oneself, but also caring for how we show up in the world. All my life experiences have been formative as I've sought to find a way and identify what works for me. I've absorbed each juncture, learning and growing while trying to make contributions along the way. And each has led me to where I am now and doing movement work that truly feeds my soul. On this journey, I've come to know that I am my best self when I'm listening to a woman in Alabama who's resisting polluting industry while fighting a racist criminal justice system that has imperiled her son. I am my best self when I'm interviewing the NACP members about lessons learned from family matriarchs about culture, community, and conservation. I'm my best self marching on the front lines and standing rock with our indigenous brothers and sisters. I'm my best self when I'm sitting at a table with big fossil fuel refuting their greedy arguments for continuing business as usual at the expense of people and planet. I'm my best self when I'm writing a memo to the Biden administration denouncing false solutions. I'm my best self when I'm sitting in a community meeting, typing every word of a community's vision and then walking with them as they seek to actualize that vision. I'm my best self when I'm sitting with our awesome team, including our board committee and our chair, Kathy Eglin, as we strategize, collectivize on how we actualize our mission of supporting frontline community self-determination. I'm my best self when I'm laughing hysterically with a friend as we share mutuality, affection, and love. I'm my best self when I'm swimming, strengthening my body while nourishing my spirit with the feeling of the healing waters against my skin and the rhythm of the motion soothing my soul. I'm my best self when I'm in conversation with God, fueled and fortified by my faith. So I'm framing my remarks around 12 lessons on values that I've learned on the road to becoming a black femme climate justice activist in these United States on the unceded territory of the myriad nations and peoples who were indigenous to this land. When I've contemplated the question of my best path, one thing is clear and that's that the course is far from linear. I've been led by what resonates most deeply with my purpose, which has been dynamic and evolving. Lesson one, purpose. As I thought about career choices at various junctures, I remembered that adage, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. If we view the world through the lens of abundance, there's so many possibilities. 
It's important that when we have the privilege of choices, we seek paths that allow us to do what fires your soul, to do whatever it is that makes you get up in the morning and say, I get to do this today. We need to do whatever it is that makes it so that the last thought before our eyes drift closed and sleep is, I live deep in my purpose today. As someone working on civil rights, I think of you all ruminating on careers in law. And I'm reminded of that quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Morality cannot be legislated, but behavior can be regulated. Judicial decrees may not change the heart, but they can restrain the heartless. As stewards of justice through the law, you've already recognized how the law has been weaponized to oppress. I saw that the school hosted the event on embedded racism in the law. Through your work with the Environmental Justice Law Clinic, you're serving those who are not receiving equal protection under the law. And where necessary, you're also utilizing the law to restrain the heartless who have for too long polluted communities with impunity. And through the Just Center for Justice Reform and the National Center for Restorative Justice and the newest, newly established Masters in Restorative Justice, you're working on laws such as ones to restrain those who have incarcerated people for profit. I also see you've begun to engage in the critical purpose of redressing past harms embedded in policies such as the Morrill and Homestead Act, which bestowed rights and resources to white people seeking to be landowners, rights that were denied emancipated Black people. This denial was exacerbated by not having access to legal services to pass properties down to descendants. Through your organizing work with the Farmland Access Legal Toolkit, you've helped farmers to access land, including addressing this issue of heirs' property, which is particularly impact impactful for Black farmers and their family. Already, you're utilizing your knowledge of the law to pave new possibilities. Lesson two, leadership comes in many forms. There is a Jamaican saying, every mickle mecca muckle, <laughs> which basically means every bit counts and what seems small can be big. Darnella Frazier was minding her own business one afternoon as she walked down the street in Minneapolis. In the span of less than 10 minutes, she committed a single act that has literally changed the world. In filming the murder of George Floyd, Darnella changed me. She grounded my vision and shifted my narrative. She awakened a sleeping nation and world. She changed the criminal justice system. And in that single act, Darnella guaranteed that there would be some measure of justice for the taking of George Floyd's life. Whether it is leading from behind or leading from the front, the most important thing is leading by doing. Leadership is also knowing when to follow in the climate justice movement we ascribe to the PEMES principles of democratic organizing which center frontline community leadership with tenets including emphasizing bottom of organizing and letting people speak for themselves. Lesson three, grounding our analysis in action and intersectionality. Audre Lorde once said, there is no such thing as a single issue struggle because we don't live single issue lives. I was once asked by one of our funders to give a talk to people in the solar industry. When I sent my slides in, they responded and said, oh no, we just want you to talk about solar. I said, okay, I won't use slides. I then proceeded to rename my remarks, Black Lives Matter, Energy Democracy, and the NAACP Civil Rights Agenda. And I went on and said what I was gonna say in the first place. This brought extreme accolades from the audience who said it was the first time that they saw their work as rooted in deep purpose. It was a lesson for everyone on intersectionality being not only a necessary frame, but a resonant one. And lesson four, reject the myth of scarcity and embrace the reality of abundance. From manifest destiny to the transatlantic slave trade to eminent domain, so much injustice has been fueled by the false narrative that there is an inverse relationship between my well being and your well being. This notion of replacements in the white national lexicon is perpetuated by this fallacy that there's not enough to go around, and therefore some people must be enslaved, oppressed displaced and eliminated for others to survive and prosper. Contrarily, we know that the earth was divinely designed to provide just what we need, not only to survive, but to thrive. We must organize our infrastructure around principles of regeneration and biomimicry of the earth's natural replenishing systems. We also have to structure around the principle of cooperation as modeled by ant and bee colonies and other species that recognize that it is through leaning into interdependence that we live to embrace another day together. Lesson five, narrative is critical. 
For our communities, narrative, narrative has been a death sentence, scarcity, replacements, job killing regulations, super predators, all of these narratives and memes are used to justify oppression based on the belief that someone has to be on the losing end of an equation that never should have existed in the first place, an equation that formed the basis for capitalism. There's a Zimbabwean proverb, until the lion writes his own history, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. We must claim our narratives and advance radical imagination grounded in the reality that says that we all can and should thrive. As we turn to the question of with whom am I traveling, lesson six is interdependence. I'm guided by Dr. Martin Luther King who said, in a real sense, all life is interrelated. All men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. Lesson seven, mutuality. One of the HEMAS principles is to work together in solidarity and mutuality. Early in my career, I was moved by the words of Lily Watson, an indigenous woman from Australia. She said, if you've come to help me, you're wasting your time. But if you've come because your liberation is bound with mine, let's walk together. That was an important lesson for me at the time when I was doing international work that was rooted in this kind of development paradigm that didn't necessarily, that didn't at all <laughs> see uh, that, that sense of mutuality and commonality. It was based on this false notion of, of, um, of, of, of aid um, and with good intentions in some cases and mixed intentions in others. <laughs> Finally, what is the force guiding the direction in my compass? Lesson eight, love. And for me, this is coupled with my faith. Famed freedom fighter Che Guevara said, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love. It is impossible to think of a genuine revolutionary lacking this quality. Yes, love. Lesson nine, grace. I experience microaggressions at least every other day. I also likely commit microaggressions every other day. We've been raised in a sexist, racist, ableist, homophobic, xenophobic society. And for us all to thrive, we are called to do the hard work of constantly resisting its indoctrination and helping others to do the same. Lately, I've taken heart in the call-in approach being espoused by Loretta Ross, founder of Sister Song, among others. She recently said, a call-in isn't actually a call-out done with love and respect because you're really seeking to hold people accountable for the potential harm, harm that they cause. But you're not gonna lose sight of the fact that you're talking to another human being. And so you extend a hand of active love and active listening to help them maybe stop and think about what they said. And I would add what they're thinking and what they're doing as a result. Lesson 10, boldness. In the words of Angela Davis, I don't wanna accept the things I cannot change. I wanna change the things I cannot accept. Every day I'm inspired by another community that has made a way out of no way by changing what they cannot accept, whether it's blocking a pipeline, shutting down a coal plant, powering their streetlights with solar, feeding their community with the local food system. Communities are changing what they cannot accept. If they can do it, certainly we can. Audre Lorde said, next time ask, what's the worst that could happen? Then push yourself a little further than you dare. We must continuously challenge ourselves to dare, to be bold, to lean into discomfort because the fruits are worth the labor. Lesson 11, integrity. As Chinua Achebe once said, one of the truest tests of integrity is its blunt refusal to be compromised. In our recent fossil fuel foolery report, we were proud to highlight some of our frontline community leadership, such as Adora Obi and Wazi of Florida, who like others, in spite of dire financial conditions, they have refused to be compromised by the manipulations of the fossil fuel industry that tries to buy our complicity in our own community's demise. We must follow in their footsteps and hold strong to our principles in spite of the many pressures to do otherwise. Lesson 12, joy. Author and activist Adrian Marie Brown writes, pleasure activism is the work we do to reclaim our whole happy and satisfiable selves from the impacts, delusions, and limitations of oppression and or supremacy. So with that, onwards and upwards. 
over the years, one of my favorite mantras has been, up ye mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. It's a quote by Mar Marcus Garvey, who's a Jamaican-born leader of the Pan-Africanist movement. And the same phrase, he coined a phrase made popular by the lyrics of a Bob Marley song. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. I'm sure Bob has turned over his grave now. <laughs> In the spirit of abundance, we must practical, practice radical imagination and free our minds to see our vision as limitless and our possibilities as endless. As attorneys, even if one can't create heart through laws, one can ensure that legislation removes barriers and creates pathways so that the heart of our communities, rooted in a vision of liberty and justice for all, can be fulfilled. Audre Lorde said, I see protests as a genuine means of encouraging someone to feel the inconsistencies, the horror of the lives we are living. Social protest is to say that we do not have to live this way. If we feel deeply, as we encourage ourselves and others to feel deeply, we then recognize that we can love deeply and we can feel joy. Then we'll dem demand that all parts of our lives produce that kind of joy. And when they do not, we will ask, why don't they? And it is in the asking that will lead us inevitably toward change. We have to remember that love, joy, and happiness aren't destinations, they are the journey. As Audre Lorde said, we do not have to live this way. As we see the headlines, each one's being worse than the last, we have to keep reminding ourselves that in this world of abundance, it doesn't have to be this way. And as agents of change, we have to make it our mission to ensure that having love, joy, and happiness in our journey and in everyone's journey isn't a privilege, it is the norm for us all. We must constantly reject the narrative that says that this is idealistic. We must embrace the fact that it is already happening and that it is our duty to scale towards universality. And you're already making a difference. You've been supporting the work of the NAACP and building this vision and reality community by community. You're already supporting the leadership of communities across the country seeking clean air, clean water, and healthy living conditions. You're leaders in the field of restorative justice. You've paved the way for an open, affirming, and inclusive <clears throat> environment for subsequent classes at the school with institutional changes such as gender neutral bathrooms, establishing Indigenous Peoples Day, and celebrating Stonewall at 50. And because of the efforts of this collective, you, <laughs> under the leadership of Dean Shirley Jefferson, the Vermont Law School was given awards for outstanding law school diversity outreach and legal education access and diversity championship by the National Black Law Pre-Law Conference. Whether you are an active force in these efforts or someone who signed a petition or just part of the community that created this campus of progressive action, you are all to be applauded. Ella Fitzgerald offers some awesome words to live by. Don't give up what you're trying to do. Where, where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. I am, <laughs> again, so honored that you had me here to have this conversation with you today. I love you all. I look forward to traveling on this journey with you all. And to that end, please feel free to get my number from the ever awesome, ever patient, ever wonderful Sue Folder. And feel free to call anytime. And finally, congratulations, Vermont Law School classes of 2020 and 2021. Take care. Thank you, Jackie. You're an inspiration to us all. Dean McCormick. Will you please present the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa? Rick Middleton, as founder of the Southern Environmental Law Center and its president for 34 years, you've inspired and affected unprecedented advances in environmental protections, including the basic right to clean air, clean water, and a livable climate. Under your leadership, the Law Center has emerged as the preeminent environmental organization in the South with over 80 lawyers in six states and on Capitol Hill. Your decades-long mission to provide a healthy environment for all continues its momentum and is especially critical today in stemming global climate change, reducing environmental inequities, and pushing for clean energy, all through the power of the law. And just yesterday, you provided the Vermont Law School community with an insightful example of your passion and expertise by delivering the 2021 VLS Environmental Lecture, reflecting on 50 years of environmental advocacy in the Southeastern United States. 
Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, and I welcome you to all of the honors, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. Jacqueline Patterson, as Senior Director of the NAACP Environmental and Climate Justice Program, you are a committed advocate for environmental and climate justice and a tireless activist for women's rights. Your passion translates into action. You have initiated new program, founded and coordinated organizations, and written and spoken publicly about the critical issues facing us today. Your deep passion for environmental justice and equality is further demonstrated through your board service to multiple organizations, engaged in efforts to make communities, ecosystems, and economies safer and more resilient, as well as to expanding opportunities for historically underrepresented professionals in related fields. Your commitment goes beyond our country's borders as you have served as Senior Women's Rights Policy Analyst for Action Aid and as Assistant Vice President of the HIV AIDS programs for IMA World Health, providing management and technical assistance to medical facilities and programs in 23 countries in Africa and the Caribbean, and advocating for reducing harmful admissions, advancing clean energy, and strengthening community resilience the NAACP's Environmental and Climate Justice Program under your leadership has provided resources and helped support communities in addressing human and civil rights issues. We recognize and honor your incredible dedication and service. Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, and I welcome you to all the honors, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. Tom Sullivan, as a nationally recognized authority on antitrust law, complex litigation, and constitutional law, your expertise has left an indelible mark on the world through your leadership and prolific scholarship. The author of 12 books and over 50 articles, you have held the positions of law school dean, professor, provost, and senior vice president at several universities, including Cambridge University, the law schools of New York University and the University of California, Berkeley and Georgetown University's Law Center. And of course, you most recently served as president of the University of Vermont from 2012 to 2019. Among other accolades, you have received the Robert J. Kutak Award from the American Bar Association for your contributions to the Legal Academy, the Judiciary and the Bar, and you currently serve as president of the Board of Directors of the American Bar Foundation. As UVM's president, emeritus, and professor of political science, you remain a neighbor, friend, and colleague of Vermont Law School. Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, and I welcome you to all the honors, privilege, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. We will now present awards to members of both graduating classes in the VLS family. Descriptions of the awards may be found in your commencement program. It is my honor to present the Learned Hand Award for Academic Excellence, established by the late Honorable Sterry Waterman, the second chair of the Vermont Law School Board of Trustees, and for many years a colleague of Judge Hand on the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. The award is for the graduating student with the highest cumulative grade point average at the end of the fifth semester. It is my pleasure to announce the 2021 class recipient of the Learned Hand Award for Academic Excellence to Paul Quackenbush. Paul finished first in his class with a 3.95 GPA while serving as a teaching assistant for property law and articles editor for the Vermont Law Review. An environmental mission scholar, an honor bestowed upon VLS students who want to use the power of the law to make a difference in their communities, Paul also was the recipient of the Vermont Law School Environmental Law Scholarship and was awarded best grades in contracts, civil procedure, constitutional law, criminal law, legal writing lab, environmental law, land use law, evidence, and First Amendment. Paul was also a semifinalist in the Deborah Voice Moot Court competition. I personally had Paul in two classes, and I can tell you that every time he raised his hand, I felt a lot of pride, but a little bit of fear, because Paul asked the most difficult questions. I know Paul's mom is watching here today and I want to tell her that I feel her. 
An outdoor enthusiast, uh, Paul served as co-chair of the VLS Outdoor Club. He also served as a student clinician in the Vermont Law School Environmental Advocacy Clinic. He worked with staff attorney on public interest environmental litigation involving federal environmental statutes, drafting notices of intent, complaints, declarations, and legal memoranda. After sitting for the Massachusetts Bar this summer, Paul plans to work as an associate at Wilmer Hale in Boston. Please join me in congratulating the 2021 Learned Hand Award recipient, Paul Quackenbush. I am also pleased to announce the 2020 class recipient of the Learned Hand Award for Academic Excellence to Dana Smith. Dana finished first in her class with a 3.95 GPA and served as editor-in-chief of the Vermont Journal of Environmental Law. She was also a recipient of the Mark Mahali Environmental Leadership Award. She was awarded the best oralist in her courtroom at the National Environmental Moot Court Competition. And during her two semesters with the Environmental Advocacy Clinic, Dana helped craft arguments delivered to the Vermont Supreme Court, argued to a panel of administrative judges at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, winning her issue, and provided insightful legal analysis to our clinic and clients alike in memorandum after memorandum. If we could define Dana as a human being and lawyer with one word, it would be trust. We trusted Dana because of her gift for legal analysis, her impeccable work ethic, her seriousness but her wry humor, her grit, her integrity, and her compassion and kindness towards her classmates. Dana was a student in my class and she also served as my teaching assistant. Since graduation, Dana sat for and passed the Illinois Bar Exam and started work at a, in private practice outside of Chicago, primarily focusing on environmental litigation. Outside of work, she and her husband just bought a house and got a puppy named Winston. Please join me in congratulating the 2020 Learned Hand Award recipient, Dana Smith. The second award is named in honor of the much loved and esteemed former president and dean of Vermont Law School, Maximilian Kempner who sadly passed away this February, just shy of his 92nd birthday. The Kempner Award was established by the Board of Trustees to honor Dean Kempner on the occasion of his retirement. It recognizes the graduating student who by personal example throughout his or her law school career exemplifies the attributes demonstrated by Dean Kempner, competence, integrity, respect, fair-mindedness, and public service. This award is presented to a student who epitomizes all of these virtues and values that Max Kempner exemplified. The 2021 Max Kempner Award goes to a student who sees the world as this classroom, Jamison Davis. Jamison Davis is a leader on campus and off whose impact on VLS has been profound. Jamison is the founder and president of the Environmental Justice Law Society a student organization whose mission it is to support communities that are disproportionately burdened by a variety of environmental harms and risks, chiefly minority and low-income communities and neighborhoods. Through Jameson's tireless work, the society was able to secure significant funding through the Jack and Dorothy Byrne Foundation and recently co-sponsored a symposium on youth and environmental justice with Duke, Howard, Shaw, and Yale universities. Jameson is a recipient of the Jonathan J. Williams Memorial Fellowship and the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship, in which he helped high schools and middle schools across Vermont develop and write anti-racism statements. Off campus, Jameson dedicates a tremendous amount of time to his community. He served a two-year term as the Town of Hartford Select Board member and has facilitated and presented at many conference talks in environmental justice, local governance, and advocacy and activism, just to name a few. He currently serves as a board member for JAG Productions, Friends of the Justice Moral Homestead, and the Vermont Natural Resources Council. Jameson reminds me of something Dean Jefferson told me when I first started at Vermont Law School. Sometimes we are the teachers to our students, but sometimes the students are teachers to us. You will hear more about Jameson soon when Dean Brennan introduces him as the class speaker for the class of 2021. Jameson Davis is the epitome of the Maximilian W. Kempner Award, and I am proud to honor him as the 2021 recipient. For 2020, the Max Kempner Award is presented to a student who exemplifies all of the virtues and values that defined Max. From the very moment that Ray Carey stepped onto the VLS campus, he was a leader. 
In his first year, he established a tutoring program for 1L students to assist them with reading and briefing cases and preparing for exams. In his second year, he served as the president of the Black Law Students Association, helping to organize the Race and the Law Symposium, one of the largest conferences on campus. In his third year, he was elected president of the Student Bar Association, the ultimate sign of respect and trust from his fellow students. He was also a valued member of the Thurgood Marshall Moot Court team, which I had the pleasure of coaching. But for all his involvement in campus organizations, Ray made his biggest mark through the compassion he showed his fellow students and his desire to help others, especially non-traditional students and those who might have been struggling both inside and outside of the classroom. He showed this, this in countless ways, including helping organize Vermont Law School's Alcoholics Anonymous chapter and encouraging students to be strong in both academic and social environments. Ray has made a rich and lasting contribution to Vermont Law School and the greater community. Ray is now clerking for the Connecticut Judiciary and preparing to take the July bar. Ray has also been working on his most important job to date as father to baby Phoebe, who he welcomed with his wife Abby shortly after graduation. It is my pleasure to present the 2020 Kempter Award to Ray Curray. It is now my honor to introduce Meg Muncy, Vice President of Vermont Law School's Alumni Association and Chair of the Nominating Committee, who will present the next award. I'm honored to be here today to present these meaningful awards to two very special graduates. Our beloved VLS's motto, Lex Pro Urbe et Orbe, Law for the Community and the World. This award is presented annually to graduates whose thoughtful interest and energy enrich the school community during their years in residence. They are people who represent the school's mission by enriching the lives of those in the school community and the communities of the Upper Valley and Vermont at large. People who exemplify the school's values by displaying constant respect and kindness to fellow students, faculty, administrators, staff, and alumni. Honorees actively support other students, ensuring a successful and rich experience at Vermont Law School. True examples of swans fly together. The recipient for 2021 is the kind of person everyone should have in their corner, always making time for others and enriching the community with generosity and kindness. While at VLS, she served as a member of the Board of Trustees as one of two student representatives. She spearheaded with a classmate, the 2021 Class Gift Initiative to honor Dean Shirley Jefferson, co-chaired the Women's Law Society, founded a mentorship program with the Vermont Bar Association Women's Division, ran the 2019 Phenomenal Women of the Year event, organized multiple pantry, clothing, and personal care product donation drives for local domestic and sexual violence abuse shelters, was secretary of the Environmental Law Society, where she led two legislative advocacy training events, organized VLS's participation in the 2019 Youth Climate Strike, co-organized the Fall Festival 5K, produced a digital book reading of the Lorax during the COVID-19 pandemic for elementary schools. And last but certainly not least, she was also a Schweitzer Fellow. She is currently a law clerk for the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development in Washington, DC. Please join me in congratulating the 2021 Lex Pro Urbe Award recipient, Erica Gerstenberger. The recipient for the 2020 Lex Pro Urbe Award was a model student and an even better human. Whatever the issue, she was always the first to offer a hand, an ear, or knowledgeable advice. During her short time at VLS, she was an advanced JD student. She organized training sessions for students to become data entry volunteers for the CARA Pro Bono Project, which provides legal resources to asylum-seeking mothers and children at a detention center in Dilly, Texas. She organized coffee with a cop to strengthen the relationship between the South Royalton Police Department and VLS planned and orchestrated the 2020 Solutions Conference on Mass Incarceration, assisted with the Race in the Law Symposium, co-chaired VLS's chapter of the National Lawyers Guild, served as an SBA Senator, as a member of the Mental Health Committee. She headed the Ad Hoc DBA Election Investigation Committee, served on the Town Relations Committee, assisted the Center for Agriculture and Food Systems with research, worked multiple semesters in the library and volunteered at local law firm, Mayor and Mayor Law. 
She also served as a mentor to many students, both academically and emotionally, was instrumental in creating the VLS band, a large unwieldy, but fabulous eclectic band of 20 plus individuals and instruments and befriended everyone she came across. She just accepted a law clerk position with an environmental law firm that provides legal counsel and advisory services in renewable energy generation and infrastructure, carbon markets and climate change, environmental commodities, biofuels and bio-based products, sustainable agriculture and forestry, conservation finance, industrial remediation and clean tech. For the class of 2020, please join me in congratulating the Lex Pro Urbe Award recipient, Maeve McDermott. Thank you, Meg. And now I have the honor of presenting the final award for today. Upon the retirement of Dean Jeff Shields in 2012, a group of trustees and donors established a fund to honor Jeff and his wife Jeannie's commitment to philanthropy at the law school. The Jeff and Jeannie Shields Prize was established as an annual award given to a member or members of the community, faculty, staff, student, alumni, parent, trustee, or friend, who has demonstrated creativity and ingenuity in, in encouraging philanthropic support of the law school. It is my pleasure to award the 2021 Shields Prize to Assistant Professor Margaret Olnick, class of 1992, for her stellar efforts in achieving 100% faculty giving participation this year. It is also my pleasure to award the 2020 Shields Prize to Scott Cullen, class of 1997, and member of Vermont Law School's Board of Trustees for his ongoing efforts to bring new funding sources to the school. Congratulations and thank you, Margaret and Scott. Thank you, Dean McCormick. And now to the business of the day. In addition to training future lawyers through our Juris Doctorate program, Vermont Law School also offers a number of master's degrees that provide deeper understanding of environmental law and policy. These degrees are described in your program. Dean Brennan will now introduce the 2021 class speaker before presenting the degree candidates. Thank you, Chair Berger. I am now pleased to introduce Jameson Davis, who has been elected by his classmates to speak on their behalf. Jameson Christopher Davis goes by he, him, his. And residents of Hartford, like me, also call him Select Board Member Davis as he served on our town board for a two-year term while at VLS. Jameson is graduating with his JD from VLS today, but he is no stranger to VLS commencement as he has already earned his master's in energy law and policy. Jameson is a passionate advocate for fighting environmental harm and injustice. Jameson helped found the Environmental Justice Law Society and served as its chair for two years worked as an advanced clinician in the Environmental Justice Clinic, and authored The History of How Low-Income and Predominantly Black Unincorporated Communities Evolved to Become EJ Communities Through State Annexation Laws and Procedures, which is set to be published in the Vermont Journal of Environmental Law this spring. So for those of you who are accounting, that's two boards, two degrees, and one published article so far. Jameson put his skills and legal education to work outside the VLS community as well. During law school, he interned with the Office of the Vermont Attorney General Civil Rights Unit, the Chesapeake Legal Alliance, and the Department of Justice Environmental Enforcement Section, Environment and Natural Resources Division. Jameson also currently serves as a member of the Board of Directors for JAG Productions, whose mission is to produce classic and contemporary African-American theater, the Friends of the Morrell Homestead, which works to foster a greater awareness of the life and legacy of Justin Morrell, and the Vermont Natural Resource Council. So add three more boards to that count from above. And though his term with the Hartford Select Board ended in 2020, he continues to provide consulting while co-authoring anti-racism policies and procedures used by municipalities, school districts, and organizations at the local, regional, and national level. As any of you who have met Jameson already know, he's an eloquent speaker, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce him as a speaker for the class of 2021. Please join me in welcoming Jameson Davis. 
Good afternoon, friends, family, faculty, and fellow graduates. First, I give an honor to the Most High, to whom I strive to be in alignment with. Second, I acknowledge the land on which I stand, speaking to you today. We acknowledge the Abenaki people as the traditional land caretakers of the Indakana, which includes parts of Vermont, New England, in Quebec. As current residents and graduating students on this unceded territory of the Abenaki people, we pay our respects to their ancestors, elders, and relations past, present, and emerging. I am honored and humbled to have been voted by my peers to speak with you all today and to officially congratulate the class of 2021. Scream, shout, dance, clap. Let's give a round of applause. And family, let them know how proud you are. This year's graduation is not like graduations past. Hence this recording, instead of us being led by marshals, deans, and bagpipes, as we take our final walk, sitting underneath the glamorous tent on the solo green. Many of us never had the opportunity to say our final farewell to friends that we made over the years, including the faculty that played the role of mentor, caretaker, and in Dean Jay's case, mother. Unfortunately, many of us were not able to enjoy our final spring and summer months in the gorgeous Green Mountains oftentimes so focused on staying safe and passing classes, only to realize we haven't been outside in days. This year, we all face mental, physical, and emotional difficulties due to COVID-19. We have all experienced loss, all students, especially the BIPOC students who come from disproportionately impacted communities parents, single mothers and fathers, were asked to stay focused while the COVID-19 virus ran rampant through our communities. To my fellow black students, our success in gradu graduating is accumulation of intergenerational strength, perseverance, faith, grit, determination, and resilience passed down from our African ancestors. We all have lost someone, someone close to us, someone who sacrificed their own dreams so we may fulfill ours. Others lost someone who showered them with encouragement and inspiration, strengthening them to keep going and believing in themselves. The great losses for so many here today come with the burden of carrying the heaviest of hearts. Let us take a moment of silence to honor and recognize the loved ones no longer here with us today. The class of 2021, we made it and we left our mark while doing so. Memories. The best way for me to describe the class of 2021 is through our shared memories. The Crust Crew, waking up with crunchy hair from the Masters Challenge. The A-Team, designing matching sweatsuits for our fearless leader, Jerry Thomas. Racing the Stowe Pinnacle Dogs to the top during a hike. Kent Sledge hikes with Dean McHenry. Bonfires and gatherings at the 420 House. The Tunbridge Fair, Sheep, wool, and apple pie festivals galore. Law prom, and since family is listening, I'll leave it at that. We have left no stone unturned and no adventure unconquered. As we carry these memories with us, there will be things we miss. We will miss the popularity of wearing hoodies during 9 a.m. classes. We will miss the conversations about Dean Logan's class, which mostly involves 
overhearing peers discuss the suit he wore that day, or whether or not anyone could understand anything he said as they stared into his eyes. We will miss Dean Latham's and Dean Brennan's performance during vagina monologues and dressing up as Professor Firestone for Halloween. Some of us will miss being woken up by the train between 1 and 4 a.m. Most of us won't. We outlasted restaurants, bars, Dean tenures, all while taking classes online during a pandemic in a social, racial, and environmental justice awakening. Class of 2021, we left our mark. I truly believe there is no better class of individuals to take on the challenges of the world. Whether we come from Minnesota, California, Alabama, or the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, we came together as passion-driven individuals and we will leave together as a ballot of swans. Together, may we travel further and our impact be greater. The leadership graduating today is second to none. Through clinics and student groups, we have advocated for vulnerable and frontline communities. We have fundraised for those who suffer through climate disasters. We are unapologetic in our beliefs, regardless of what they are. When we do not all align and agree, we have discussions around the issues to make sure everyone's voice is heard and represented. During our time at VLS, we learned of the ways the legal system has created systemic and institutional barriers. We learned that our laws, regulations, and local ordinances rarely intersect with current societal, societal morals. Environmental law courses explain the consequences of unequal enforcement and the burdens placed on BIPOC and low-income low communities when we blatantly ignore the consequences of our capitalistic actions. And while the law and morals rarely intersect, we must become that bridge. We, as consultants, policy writers, lawyers, and future judges are the gatekeepers of this profession. We must become that bridge that connects societal morals with legal standards. As in-house counsels to large organizations and corporations, we must call out performative wokeness, where companies use meaningless statements about their commitments to BIPOC community, but do little to change their policies and practices within. We must champion anti-racism, because as we know, it is not enough to not be racist. We must be anti-racist. I encourage you all as future leaders to examine internal practices and procedures within the organizations which you will work. You are the voice needed in homogenous rooms to shift the culture from tolerance to acceptance. For the ideas of hate and supremacy to have it be embedded in American culture, it needed the backing of an authoritative structure. The justice system has been and continues to be that structure that can and will end with us. We, the class of 2021 from Vermont Law School, will continue to support organizations across the globe to right the wrongs of our past. The restorative justice graduates will lead this country into a new era of criminal justice reform, empowering all defendants to challenge socioeconomic biases. Policy graduates will find themselves working hand in hand with community members, protected classes, and affinity groups who are too often targeted for their differences instead of being celebrated. Energy graduates will use their expertise to lead us into a new era of accessible, renewable energy. Food and agriculture graduates will assist the fight to eliminate food apartheid and food insecurity throughout our country and worldwide 
by working to improve regenerative, regenerative agriculture by supporting ecosystem models. Though the challenges we face may seem individualized, they are deeply intersectional. So when you find yourself fighting for energy regulations, Find space to advocate for indigenous and LGBTQAA plus rights. When you find yourself closing multi-million dollar deals, advocate for green jobs, health care, and climate justice. Whether you find yourself in a high-rise office building at a large firm or in someone's basement at a startup nonprofit, remember to advocate for those with impairments and disabilities while also finding ways to assist immigrants and new Americans. And why not eliminate the hate while we're at it? As a class, we showed a willingness to lead when we continued an important conversation about the mural and chase, a conversation that started over 20 years ago. After years of petitioning, we also had the pleasure of getting Vermont Law School the best class gift any class has ever given by finally doing what we should years ago in honoring Dean Shirley Jefferson with the Dean Shirley Jefferson Gallery. Whether you're graduating with your JD, your Master's in Restorative Justice, Environmental Law and Policy, Energy Regulation, Food or Agriculture, you are the solution to the problems that await. There is no doubt that the class of 2021 are natural born leaders driven by passion to have a positive impact on a world that is in desperately need of positivity. In closing, I encourage my peers, friends, and future colleagues to be comfortable with the voice that you have. Speak up and speak out. Do not fear uncertainty, for uncertainty is the final moment before your long-awaited breakthrough. Remember, from this day forward, the Vermont Law School Swan family has your back, no questions. 2021 graduates, this world will be better off due to your sacrifices you've made and the contributions that you make to elevate all people. Class of 2021, we left our mark. I leave with you a quote from my 44th president, Barack Hussein Obama. Change will not come if you wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Congratulations, Class 2021, and thank you. Thank you, Jameson. Chair Berger, I have the honor to present the 2021 candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor, candidates for joint degrees, candidates for master's degrees, and candidates for certificates. 2021 Juris Doctor and Joint Degrees. Trevor Atkins, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Theophilus Agby, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Jonathan Alejandrino, Juris Doctor. Austin Douglas Anderson, Juris Doctor. Aaron Armstrong, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Jasmine Nicole Armstrong, Juris Doctor. Sophia A. Battle. Juris Doctor. Santana Batts. Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Stephen David Bauer. Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Frank Beal. Juris Doctor. Roger Benham. Juris Doctor. Allison Berg. Juris Doctor, 
Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Zachary Berger, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. Paige Helene Beyer, Juris Doctor Cum Laude. Faith Bickner, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Ian Blackwelder, Juris Doctor. Alec Stephen Bolinsky, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Beth Ann Bowles, Juris Doctor. Elliot Boyle, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Kenneth Bozarth, Juris Doctor. Matthew Brooks, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Maggie Broughton, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Cassidy Brown, Juris Doctor. Oscar James Bruckner, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. John Christopher Burgess, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Justin Burnworth, Juris Doctor. Sawyer Burden, Juris Doctor. Andrew Callahan, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Terry Ann Campbell, Juris Doctor. Lena Caps, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Sarah Gabrielle Karen, Juris Doctor. Nathan Henry Carrier, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Daniel Cho, Juris Doctor. Bailey Chowdhury, Juris Doctor. Robert Jens Christensen, Juris Doctor. Paul Albert Clark, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Ryan Samuel Clemens, Juris Doctor. Andrew D. Clyburn, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Shakina Kluba, Juris Doctor. Christina Teresa Colangelo, Juris Doctor. Jillian Cowley, Juris Doctor. Michael J. Krauss, Juris Doctor. Maggie Karen, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with distinction. Jameson Christopher Davis, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Philip N. Deathrage, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with distinction. Chad Edward DeFore, Juris Doctor. Francis J. DeMora, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Antonia Marie Douglas, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, with distinction. Bridget Dowrett, Juris Doctor. Jacqueline Alexis Dufour, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. R.J. Dufour, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Madeline Rice Dunn, 
Juris Doctor. Varun Dutt, Juris Doctor. Christopher Brady Eves, Juris Doctor. Bradford Farrell, Juris Doctor. Caitlin Ferry, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Brittany Forrest, Juris Doctor. Elizabeth Franks, Juris Doctor. Sarah Galen, Juris Doctor. Erica Gerstenberger, Juris Doctor. Suhasini Ghosh, Juris Doctor. Connor R. Gilgallen, Juris Doctor. Dr. Heather Gill Friarking, Juris Doctor. Dylan John Gillis, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. William C. Goldberg, Juris Doctor. Jessica Griswold, Juris Doctor. Annie Harb, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Ellie Hardwick, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, with distinction. Sarah Harlan, Juris Doctor. Ashley Harper, Juris Doctor. Nicholas Hinckley, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy, with distinction. Miriam Henson, Juris Doctor. Cheyenne Hinton, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jordan Marie Hitch, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Joseph Hodges, Juris Doctor. Nicholas Houghton, Juris Doctor. Andrew Hirsch, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jacqueline Renee Jackson, Juris Doctor. Christina Marie Janasek, Juris Doctor. Miriama Jones, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Peter Lucas Joseph, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Katerina Alexandrova Karpenko, Juris Doctor. Peter Kazakis, Juris Doctor. Laura Francis Keenan, Juris Doctor. Aaron Kelly, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, Summa Cum Laude. Margaret Kelly, Juris Doctor Cum Laude. Justeep Singh Kara, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Justin Kim, Juris Doctor. Ariel Veronica King, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Lauren King, Juris Doctor, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. John Kirkpatrick, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Morgan Klimek, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Camden James Knights, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. 
Elizabeth Krensak, Juris Doctor. Dan Kruskowski, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Bailey Laflamme, Juris Doctor, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Andrew Thomas Lechner, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Eric Martin Leachy, Juris Doctor. Stephen J. Limbo, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Stephanie A. Liam Bruno, Juris Doctor. Kelly Renee Limoncelli, Juris Doctor. Sylvia Lowe, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Lauren Stewart Maybe, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Julia Dylan McDonald, Juris Doctor. Jillian Macura, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Christine Margaret Martin, Juris Doctor, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Max D. Matt, Juris Doctor. Henry Mock, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Aaron Miller, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. William Alexander Mishkolsky, Juris Doctor, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Alita Mooney, Juris Doctor. Samantha Ann Morrison, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Carrie Ann Morrissey, Juris Doctor. Mariana Lisbeth Munoz, Juris Doctor. Reagan Elizabeth Murphy, Juris Doctor. Solomon Nasseri, Juris Doctor. Joel Nelson, Juris Doctor. Ainsley Michael Newbert, Juris Doctor. Austin Levi Nichols, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Sean Patrick Noonan, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Kaylee Nicole Olson, Juris Doctor. Cleana O'Malley, Juris Doctor. Kristen Nicole Ostanek, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Danielle Palermo, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Maximilian J. H. Pasowitz, Juris Doctor. Mithul Patel, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Brian Brendan Pattison, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Ethan Pauling, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Marissa Danielle Pisania, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Paul Quackenbush, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Allison Renee Ramelson Kurt, Juris Doctor. Carly Ripple, Juris Doctor. Stephen Rivas, Juris Doctor. Alina Rizvi, Juris Doctor. 
Timothy Roberts, Juris Doctor. Vanessa Romero, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Lauren L. Rosenberg, Juris Doctor. Carice Renee Rushing, Juris Doctor. Janine T. Salome, Juris Doctor. Andrea Salazar, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Christine Stein Soroyan, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Lauren Rachel Saylor, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Austin Scarborough, Juris Doctor. India Schoenherr, Juris Doctor. Kelsey Schweitzer, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Heather Shepard, Juris Doctor. Lauren Sherman, Juris Doctor. Jordan Malik Souter, Juris Doctor. Alexander Spritzer, Juris Doctor. William Stalker, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jordan Stone, Juris Doctor. Hunter Sutherland, Juris Doctor. Brant Schwartz, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Derek Tenazaki Hudson, Juris Doctor. Ashley Imaya Nicole Taylor, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Jerry Lynn Thomas II, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Brittany Toves, Juris Doctor. Jacob Daniel Trahan, Juris Doctor. John Garrett Turner, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Veronica Ung Kono, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. April Urbanowski, Juris Doctor. Carla Usher, Juris Doctor. Jordan L. Van Cleve, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Anna Vertefe, Juris Doctor. Lucas Wagoner, Juris Doctor. Joseph Barrett Walter, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Solal Wanstock, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Elizabeth Kendall Watts, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Blake Adele Weinard, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Lancy Lene Wetman, Juris Doctor. Lauren Wilson, Juris Doctor. Gabriella Wood, Juris Doctor. Justin T. Wood, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Lauren Ruth Wustenberg, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. John Yanagihara, Juris Doctor. Terry Jacoby Young, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. 
Justin Zafrin, Juris Doctor. Dylan Zimmerman, Juris Doctor. 2021 Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Krishana Abraham Petrie, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Lauren Jean Adomi, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Sarah Bramirer, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jamie Colby, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Joseph Crosby, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Matthew Dar, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Amanda Davis, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Natalie Joy Davis, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Caronia Di Stefano, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Sophie Earhart, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Anne Eldred, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Nicole Fendino, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Elena Fernandez, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Elisa Hardy, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Alan Brent Kennedy, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Diana Koch, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Janet Lineau, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Robert Mole, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Emma Niles, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. James O'Brien, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Kevin O'Reardon, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Carlos Ortiz, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Gina Marie Polino, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Andrew Pelcher, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Emily Pound, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Nicole Poi, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Samuel Rule, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Tracy Scanlon, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Erica Scott, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Joseph Sepulveda, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Olivia Setzer, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Hunter Joanne Smith, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Lindy Elizabeth Songer, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Emily Strobach, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. John Van Dyke, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Sydney Vaught, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jessica White, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. 2021 Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Colette Brashears, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. Donna Carter, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Jesse Kiula, 
Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. Joseph Francesi, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Sheila Danielle Kaplan, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. Ian Lund, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Amanda Mayot, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Louis Siragusa, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. John Mark Walter, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Joseph Walter, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. 2021 Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Jennifer Bryant, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Suzanne Kelly, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Claire Curvran, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Paul Gerard Mallard, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Lyle Nichols, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Nicholas Allen Pritchett, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Lindsay Richardson, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Zoe Helena Sigel, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Jeffrey Sokolik, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Kelsey Willardson, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. 2021 Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Grace Agbadu, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Carla Shioban Barron, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. David Buckland, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Erica Calderon, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Taryn DeSorbo, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Brian E. Filio, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Jennifer Fugate, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. William Fusaro, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Jennifer Dow Hempstead, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Emma Hurst, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Gabriel Jackson, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Nathalie Laura Javier, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Sean Edward McDonald, Jr., Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Dee Dee Minter, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Derek Miodovnik, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Caleb D. Subaka, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. David Thomas, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Sophie Thompson, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Leslie Marie Thorson, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Amanda West, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. 
Taylor Wisniewski, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Amanda Wolf, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Anthony Yarborough, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. 2021 Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Isabel Bluen, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Vanessa Brown, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Laura Marie Hughes Cheng, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Madeline Collins, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Zoe Raven Craig, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Jeffrey Ross Golan, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Harold Housley, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Anne Kalp, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Adam Morello, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Randall Mixon, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Catherine Pimenter Prager, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Frederick Douglas Randall II, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Allison Iris Rogers, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Jennifer Wynn, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. 2021 Master of Laws in Energy Law. Daniel Hall, Master of Laws in Energy Law. Benjamin Allen Cowan, Master of Laws in Energy Law. Minky Lee, Master of Laws in Energy Law. Walter N. Vernon IV, Master of Laws in Energy Law with Distinction. Jeffrey William Wainer, Master of Laws in Energy Law with Distinction. 2021 Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. Sonia Daniloff, Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. Ludovica Mastro Buono Braun. Master of Laws in American Legal Studies with Distinction. Lucy Sasson, Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. 2021 Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Richard Angel, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Kaylee Biles, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Stephanie Burns, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Celine Colburn, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Marky Coleman, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Suzanne Daber, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Carrick Edwards, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Lanaisha Edwards, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Jerry Fields, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Sarah Gorman, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Ulena Joliker Heft, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Tiffany Crucy Kelly, 
Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Sean Kyler, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Jennifer Lee Gonyea, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Melanie Mers, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Patrick Ruzo, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Molly Ryan, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Mickey Shaw, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Allison Stamps, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Leticia Taylor, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Rodney Tompkins, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. Katrina Williams, Professional Certificate in Restorative Justice. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, I hereby confer upon you the degree or degrees listed after your name, and I welcome you to all of the honors, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. Dean Brennan will now introduce the 2020 class speaker before presenting the degree candidates. Thank you, Chair Berger. I am pleased to introduce Gordon Merrick, who has been elected by his classmates to speak on their behalf. Gordon Merrick went to college in Maine, worked as a community organizer, farmhand, line cook, and food distributor in New Hampshire, and completed the Upper New England trifecta by coming to Vermont Law School. Given his background, it's probably no surprise that when Gordon arrived on campus, he became involved in the Campus Greening Committee and the Food and Agricultural Law Society. He helped to reduce campus waste by bringing reusable containers to the cafe and raising awareness about composting on campus, which is not only an environmentally important practice, but is also now required by Vermont law. In addition to his work in the VLS community, Gordon excelled in his legal scholarship, authoring a paper discussing the inadequacies of the Federal Election Commission. And in case you were wondering, the paper was really good and won the Jonathan B. Chase paper competition. He didn't stop there though, and is also co-authoring a to-be-published report on election reforms in Vermont to enact to protect its participatory democracy. Since graduating in 2020, Gordon has been working as a legal fellow for a joint project between the Conservation Law Foundation and Vermont Law School, where he has continued to bring his passion for regenerative food systems to his professional life. He aims to work in the realm of agricultural conservation policy or election policy, helping bring about the just transition that must take place to have an equitable future. And he is ready to begin what I am sure is a bright career as an attorney right away as he has already passed the bar exam. You have all waited a year for this. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Gordon Merrick. Hello everyone. Uh, first, I would like to again Thank you all for the opportunity to be speaker and president of class of 2020. It's a serious responsibility and a task that I do not take lightly. We have all achieved some incredible things over the past few years, having gone through what some consider the most rigorous educational experience there is. We learned things from this institution that ranged from what it means for laws to be unconstitutional and how that definition changes with the political realities of our nation to the elements of codified crimes. Many of us also focused on what makes this school truly unique, its environmental and justice-oriented programming. We were exposed to the workings of some of the most complex legal and regulatory frameworks that exist, never losing sight of what this education was intended to be used for. <clears throat> the school is a mission-oriented institution, reflected by those of us here today. The mission many of us came to school with has been altered slightly, but if I may say it, we are all working towards the same thing, building a better future for society at large. 
Some of us will work in the field of climate change response, and some in restorative justice, some in international migrations, wildlife protection. The list goes on. But the most valuable thing I learned while a part of this bevy at VLS was not taught by it. It came from the lessons, the stories, and the truths that were told by every single one of you that makes this place what it truly is, a community. The most valuable lesson I learned here is this. <clears throat> the work, the titles, the achievements, they won't save you. But the life you live, the people you meet, the relationships you build, and the experiences you live along the way just might. The great achievements you will all meet, to the, this graduation being one of them, will not give your life meaning. To paraphrase the great character Lester Freeman from The Wire, meaning will come from the shit that happens while you're waiting for moments that never come. Now let's get out there and live. Congratulations, classes of 2020 and 2021. Thank you, Gordon. Chair Berger, I now have the honor to present the 2020 candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor, the Joint Degrees, and the Master's Degrees. 2020 Juris Doctor and Joint Degrees. Lauren Jean Adomi, Juris Doctor. David A. Allen, Juris Doctor. Ashley Elizabeth Angel, Juris Doctor, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Evan Christopher Antal, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Robert Maurice Appleyard, Juris Doctor. Rachel Sue Aramburu, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Aya Thadi Badran, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Sarah G. Baer, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Sydney Valentine Bentz, Juris Doctor. Matthew D. Bielobrook, Juris Doctor. Ellie Lynn Bortinsky, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Danielle Jean Bratmiller, Juris Doctor. Eric Brandeis, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. John D. Brooks, Juris Doctor. Daniel William Brown, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Benjamin J. Canellis, Juris Doctor. Reynald Alexander Carre, Jr., Juris Doctor. Victoria L. Chase, Juris Doctor. Cassandra B. Chaves. Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, with distinction. Sedona Elaine Chavez, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Austin Scott Chile, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Bohan Chen, Juris Doctor. Travis Byron Clark, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Kyle Scott Claus, Juris Doctor. Nicholas A. Clemente, Juris Doctor. Gordana Ariel Clevenger, Juris Doctor. Justin Cooper. Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Zoe Craig, Juris Doctor. 
Gage Cusick. Juris Doctor, magna cum laude. Lindsay DeMay, Juris Doctor. Olivia Kaylin Deans, Juris Doctor. Jessica Marie Debsky, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Andrew John Dinwiddie, Juris Doctor. Emily C. Donaldson, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Jessica P. Dowdy, Juris Doctor. Harrison Drapo, Juris Doctor. Sadie Edmondson, Juris Doctor. Frank Jason Patrick Erickson, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Elizabeth Renee Feinberg, Juris Doctor, Master of Agriculture Law and Policy. Gabriella Lucia Farrago, Juris Doctor. Shanita Dewanet Felder, Juris Doctor. Alex Figueroa, Juris Doctor. Karen Lynn Fitzgerald Marino, Juris Doctor. Kathleen M. Flanagan, Juris Doctor. Robert Paul Foley III, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Theodore W. Gilliam, Juris Doctor. Patrick Glenn, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Kelsey Lynn Godin, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jordan W. Greenyear, Juris Doctor. Lewis Grove, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Ronald Andrew Hammond, Juris Doctor. Chester D. B. Harper, Juris Doctor. Dylan Lee Harris, Juris Doctor Cum Laude. William Cooper Hayes, Juris Doctor Magna Cum Laude. Anna Hazlett, Juris Doctor. Allison Renee Hare, Juris Doctor. Marissa Lee Healing. Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Amy Harrington, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Chad Patrick Hirsch, Juris Doctor. Abigail Hogan, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Andrew Lewis Hewlett, Juris Doctor. Samuel Ingram, Juris Doctor. Sadie Martha Jacobs, Juris Doctor. Noah James Jallis Prufer, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Serge Carmen Emmanuel Jean Baptiste, Juris Doctor. David Edward Jennings, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Ethan Johnson, Juris Doctor. Kimberly E. Johnson, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. David Herman Kahn, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Jared Matthew Kahn, Juris Doctor. 
Eric Axel Kopila, Juris Doctor. Fatima Ahmad Khan, Juris Doctor. Leah Kiefer, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Alexandra Carmela Kimball, Juris Doctor, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Kalala Carol Kite, Juris Doctor. Catherine A. Klaus, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Megan Grace Knight, Juris Doctor. Catherine Sarah Crawl, Juris Doctor. Alexandra Julia Kruzinski, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Charles Quo, Juris Doctor. Edward Leckerling, Juris Doctor. Laura Lee, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Edmund Owen Lesesne, Juris Doctor. Christopher Long, Juris Doctor. Paul A. Mather III, Juris Doctor. Elizabeth Aaron McAndrew, Juris Doctor. Maeve Elizabeth Catherine McDermott, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Gabriella A. McMurtry, Juris Doctor. Gordon N. Merrick, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Daniel Anthony Mihawk, Juris Doctor. Ryan J. Mitchell, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Adam Paul Mittermeier, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Sarah Ann Moradian, Juris Doctor Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy, with distinction. Julius S. Moss, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Michael Vincent Muya, Juris Doctor. Latif Rashad Munir, Juris Doctor. Naveed Nanji, Juris Doctor. Anders K. Newbury, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Brian Fan Nguyen, Juris Doctor. Daria Nicotina, Juris Doctor. Megan E. Noonan, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. William D. Northrop, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Jessica Elizabeth Ogle, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Carly Susan Orozco, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy, with distinction. Miranda L. Page, Juris Doctor. Seamus Patrick Page, Juris Doctor. Debbie Rohangas Pakbaz, Juris Doctor. Alexandra Ann Peleshi, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy, Cum Laude. Grace Isabel Patrick, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Charles Osborne Moyer Peel, Jr., Juris Doctor. Yasmin Perez Ortiz, Juris Doctor. Madison L. Peavy, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude.
Connor D. Ploger, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Sarah Puzo, Juris Doctor. Nisha Rakpanishmani, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Frederick Douglas Randall II, Juris Doctor. David Riley, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Allison Iris Rogers, Juris Doctor. Pere A. Roy, Juris Doctor. Melissa Christine Sali, Juris Doctor. Emily Rose Samet, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Colette Christina Schmidt, Juris Doctor, Cum Laude. Emily Rose Schwartz, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Wishroot Shalit, Juris Doctor. Akashdeep Singh, Juris Doctor. Marisol Aguilar Skelton, Juris Doctor. Michael J. Skolnick, Juris Doctor. Dana Smith, Juris Doctor, Summa Cum Laude. Justin T. Somolovsky, Juris Doctor, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, with Distinction. Eric Vaughn Springfield, Juris Doctor. Alexander Steinbach, Juris Doctor. Carlson Gray Swafford, Juris Doctor, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jonathan Simon Teller Ellsberg, Juris Doctor Magna Cum Laude, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, Summa Cum Laude. Nancy L. Tomasco, Juris Doctor. Bethany Ann Town, Juris Doctor. Soledad Helena Triff, Juris Doctor. Peter Utz, Jr., Juris Doctor. Claire Valentine Fossum, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude, Master of Energy Regulation and Law, with Distinction. Amanda Celine Vega, Juris Doctor. Jason Warfield, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. Amanda Susan Webster, Juris Doctor. Therese Wilkerson, Juris Doctor. Elissa Willardson, Juris Doctor. Nicole Elizabeth Ring Young, Juris Doctor. Kristen Leanne Zweifel, Juris Doctor, Magna Cum Laude. 2020 Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Catherine Burden, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Mackenzie Bendis, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Karen Blakelock, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Marianne Teresa Bogaki, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Tanner Brantley, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Megan M. Cuseno, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Moore Mamadou Jop, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Kajerstin Karina Duran Johnson, 
Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Eleanor J. Eckel, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Deja Edwards, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Bede Ekanwa Amuka, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Lita Anna Gaudiak Huta, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Tracy Leanne Hamilton, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Julia Kanzirski, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Caitlin Nicole Kerr, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Kayla Leandre Kiefer, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Sabrina Clarice King, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Madeline Lairs, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Nell Elizabeth McMillan Actmeyer, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Misty D. McCartney, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Jessica A. McLaughlin, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Yan Ping Mei, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Nicholas Jose Moreno, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Catherine Nolan, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Allison M. Pilcher, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Rachel Marie Pomeroy, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Lindsay Nicole Roden, Master of of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Joe Davies Sapphire, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Dominic Richard Sarte, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Janiel Christina Scott, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Joshua Singer, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Nicole Doromal Smith, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Teresa Elizabeth Steele Schober, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Stacy Danielle Strother. Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Ananda Thomason, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Nicholas Tonti, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Sonia Torres, Master of Environmental Law and Policy. Ginevra Wetmore, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. Amanda Marie Wonder, Master of Environmental Law and Policy with Distinction. 2020 Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Arthur Baker, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. Jacqueline Daywart, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. Lily Elmore, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Christopher A. Heine, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Joshua D. Hodges, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. 
Cody Cabus, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Russell Mendel, Master of Energy Regulation and Law. Danielle Wiseman, Master of Energy Regulation and Law with Distinction. 2020 Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Alice Jane Burlow, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Christopher Bonasia, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Johanna Doran, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Rebecca Dawn Harris, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Lisa A. McCaig. Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Michael Benjamin Rice, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Tessa Romanski, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy with Distinction. Beatrix A. Wessel. Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. Emily Amaral Whittier, Master of Food and Agriculture Law and Policy. 2020 Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Gloria Alderman, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Caleb Briggs, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Brooke Catalano, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Catherine Devrin Abra Silver Frederick, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Lady Laura Friaz, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Derek A. Gilna, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Chandler Harshaw, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Stephanie E. Mervin, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Kimberly Nicole Mitchell, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Vanessa Nelson Knox, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Delinda Passes, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Daniel Lynn Pilcher, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Diane R. Reinhardt, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Cassidy W. Rinfrew, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Susan N. T. Sam Minsa, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice. Gabriel Taylor Smith, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Brianna Underwood, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Danielle Wallace, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. Blake Whitehead, Master of Arts in Restorative Justice with Distinction. 2020 Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Manuel J. Perez Abreu, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Matthew D. Baki, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Kevin Buchanan, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Lynn Ding, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Roberto Joaquin Reyes Escobar, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. 
Elizabeth Ann Thiel, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Laura Fernandez, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Claudia Beatrice Rubio Geraldo, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Jason Robert Hepperly, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Nicholas Allen Pritchett, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Kristen Marie Scrank, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Shannon Lee Sweeney, Master of Laws in Environmental Law with Distinction. Chi Ying Dorothy Wan, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. Shushu Zhang, Master of Laws in Environmental Law. 2020 Master of Laws in Energy Law. Kojo Eduardo Manuel Atiso, Master of Laws in Energy Law. Megan R. C. Kala, Master of Laws in Energy Law with Distinction. Sally Mtambo, Master of Laws in Energy Law with Distinction. Brian D. Trebi. Master of Laws in Energy Law with Distinction. 2020 Master of Laws in Food and Agriculture Law. Esther Acqui, Master of Laws in Food and Agriculture Law. Kendall Nicolay Dix, Master of Laws in Food and Agriculture Law with distinction. Madhvi Mehta, Master of Laws in Food and Agriculture Law. Joel Stroud, Master of Laws in Food and Agriculture Law. 2020 Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. Manon Bouquet, Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. Juliette Dufo, Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. Josette Mokuba Iklawa, Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. Shin Lin, Master of Laws in American Legal Studies. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vermont Law School, I hereby confer upon you the degree or degrees listed after your name, and I welcome you to all of the honors, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereto. Members of the faculty, staff, Board of Trustees, alumni, and families and friends, please recognize the achievements and distinctions of Vermont Law School's 46th and 45th graduating classes, the classes of 2021 and 2020. I would like to thank all members of the staff, students, and faculty who helped make this special virtual occasion one of celebration. And now for a rendition of the National Anthem sung by JD Class of 2021 and former student trustee, Ariel King. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights o'er the ramparts we've watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that 
but our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Ariel. This concludes the official proceedings of Vermont Law School's 2021 commencement. In these next few minutes, please enjoy music played by our wonderful bagpiper, Ian McCarg, and special messages sent to swans. We look forward to seeing you shortly for a commencement toast. <laughs>